Welcome to the Victorious Life Broadcast. I'm Lisa Boldo, and always, it is a pleasure, as always, it's a pleasure to be here with you. The topic of this broadcast is how to overcome, or the way to overcome any battles in life, anything that comes your way. You're going to learn how to overcome it tonight, and it's a very simple secret. So we're just going to dive right in because, you know, there's stuff that I want to cover with you. Of course, I'm going to give you the Word of God because I back up everything with the Word of God with Scripture. So it's very, very important. So welcome, welcome. I see you jumping on here and it's just great to see all your names and it's lovely. So, so welcome. So the way to overcome in life. The greatest weakness in the world is unbelief. I'm going to say that again. The greatest weakness in the world is unbelief. The greatest power in the world is faith, right? The greatest power is faith. And it's the faith that works by love. Galatians 5, 6 says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision have any value. All that matters is faith expressed through love, right? So we know that fear is the opposite of faith, right? We know that. And we know that there's no fear in love. In fact, the Word of God, the Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. Think about it. If you have perfect love toward people, there's not going to be any jealousy. When someone is succeeding, you're going to be happy for them. You're not going to be fearful that, oh my gosh, they're getting ahead of me. That might make me look bad. No, that's not love. That's fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Okay? So if a, if a coworker gets a promotion, be happy for them. That's real love. That's walking in love. Okay. I don't know. The, the example just came to me. That's not in my notes. It's just, you know... I ask the Lord that when I open my mouth, he just fills it. I've got notes, but the Holy Spirit speaks, so praise God. 1 John 5.5, 5, this is good. And I want to just say this too. You know, the world around us is filled with fear, with torment, with regret, with brokenness. I used to be that in that, in, in that realm as well just because of things that I'd been through in my life. And it was only when I surrendered to God and it was a process, learning, getting in his word. And now, you know, I believe that and I've seen acceleration. People that were totally lost, that within six months, they are really strong in the things of God. But it comes because of surrender and because a decision, because of a decision to follow God, to, uh, to line your way of thinking up with the word. You know, yeah, but no, the word. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> I'm telling you, this is how you're gonna, this is how you overcome. And here's the scripture right here. First John 5, 5 says, who then overcomes the world? Well, no, that's my question. Who, who then overcomes the world? Who can overcome the world? No, actually, I'm sorry, that is the scripture. First John 5, 5, it says, who then overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Boom. That's it. That in a nutshell. So how are you going to win every battle in life? Who can win every battle in life? Who can overcome the world's way of thinking and doing things? Only the person that believes, truly believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, my gosh, you're going to want to know, well, what does he say? He's our role model. He's your role model of how you need to live your life, right? And, you know, I know that some watching might say, yeah, but he's God. Yeah, but on the earth, he came as a man, right? He was fully God, but he put his divinity aside to come to earth, be born of the virgin. He had to learn how to walk, how to talk, how to, you know, grow in wisdom and stature, and God was with him. And Galatians 4, 6 says that God, if you're a believer in Jesus, God has sent the spirit of his son to live in us, right? And 1 Corinthians six seventeen says that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. So we are sons of God. Jesus was the son of God and we are sons of God. And Jesus said, everything that I have, right, all the authority 
all authority has been given to Jesus in heaven and on earth. And he said, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. But how many are still walking around not knowing, even as believers, that they have authority over sickness, over disease, over the devil? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it's, it's okay. I get excited, right? Very passionate. So as you come into alignment with the word of God, fear is going to be cast out. When you make a decision that, you know what, forget the way I'm thinking. What does God say on this? I'm telling you, that's what I did. My friend, I was on my knees and I just said, God, I was like, I surrender. I didn't know to say, Father, Lord Jesus. I just said, God, I surrender. I said, if you help me, I'll do anything. I don't want to die. That's how low I was in my life in 1999. It was like February of 99 and it was the worst time of my whole life. That whole, I guess you could say 1999, it was the worst. And then I found Jesus for real in January of 2000. That is when I surrendered and dropped to my knees and my whole life changed. And within six months, you know, I must have read about 25 Kenneth E. Hagen books and that was the beginning of my faith walk and I never looked back. And then I had a real, you know, an easy to read Bible and I just started learning. I spent a lot of times in the Psalms, you know, when you're, when you're hurting really, really bad. I mean, I just, you know, I went through the, the gospels and anyway, sometimes I would just flip open the Bible. Not that I, you know, suggest you do that, but sometimes I did that. I was like, Lord, but you don't always want to do that because it might say something that, you know, you don't want it to say, but you just say, Lord, show me. But I remember, I'm just sharing my heart with you here, one morning on Easter, I remember one morning, it was pouring rain, I was so sad, my son wasn't with me, he was with his dad, it was his weekend, and I remember just crying and crying and crying, and when I woke up, I just remembered the Lord, oh, I flipped open the Bible, and it said, don't be sad, again, I say, don't be sad, and I was like, oh, you know, and because I was, re I didn't have... How do I say this? You know, when you're in that time of, um, in the wilderness, if you will, I mean rock bottom, and you're crying out to God, he hears you. He's very, you know, he's right there. And he says that anyone who calls on him, he will in no way cast out. No way. And if you're suffering today or you know someone that is, tell them to call out to Jesus. He cares. He hears. Okay. So going on with the message, right? As you come into alignment with God's word, fear is going to be cast out, right? The word of God starts to be released and then you find yourself getting grounded. You, you start getting solid in God's word. There's nothing better. You just grow from there. It's awesome. And when you realize how much God loves you, that's the beginning of everything, right? How do you know? People say, no, but I've, you don't know what I've done. No, it doesn't matter what you've done, right? Doesn't matter what you've done. The Apostle Paul basically, you know, was sitting there cheering on Stephen's stoning, right? David, he killed somebody. I mean, I'm just saying, it doesn't matter what you've done. If your heart is turning and you want the Lord and you're tired of doing things your way, all you have to do is call out to him. He's never going to throw you away or say no he never will if you mean it done that's what he came for he came to save the lost right think about it and this is how much God loves you he thought that your life and my life was worth the death of his son that's uh, that's just beyond first John 4 19 says we we love him because he first loved us if you love God, it's because he loved you first, mm, right? And when did God love you? When did God love you? When did he love me? Always. But he showed himself strong when he loved us. He loved you and he loved me when we were steeped in our sin. He loved us right in the middle of it and he was just waiting. He was waiting for me to get tired of doing things my way and say, Lord, I need you. I need help. I need help. I can't do it. I don't even want to do it my way anymore. My way was, was a wreck. It was not good. 
and maybe you feel the same way. So in any event, and what did Jesus say? He said, your sins are forgiven, right? Your sins are forgiven. Luke 5, 20. Why did he say it? Because he loves you. He loves you. Mm. Hebrews 2.10 says, okay, why? So Hebrews 2.10, so that he might bring many sons to glory. What does that even mean? It means so that he could bring many that were lost from the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom. And we could all be family together with God. Okay? Mm. And when you do that, there's glory there because God gives you his glory. Oh, he's so awesome. So good. So whatever is born of God overcomes the world. All right, let me say that again. So whatever is born of God overcomes the world. This is scripture. And this is the victory. What is the victory? Your faith. Our faith is the victory. Our faith in Jesus. Our faith in God is the victory that overcomes the world. And I mean really having faith. Because when you have faith, you are bold. You are confident. You are like, mm, there is nothing that I can't do because Jesus is with me. He's in me and he's for me. He's in you, he's with you, and he's for you. So there's nothing that you and him cannot do because you're one spirit together. 1 Corinthians six seventeen. I love it. I love it. So are you born again? Are you born again? Then you're born of God. And you, your faith is the victory that will overcome anything that the world can throw at you. Mm. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Praise God. To believe is to overcome. Because your faith is the victory that overcomes anything in the world. Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. You're an heir you're an heir to all the promises because you believe. Because you believe. If you don't believe, well then you're not going to receive the promises because you won't put your faith in motion. And remember, faith releases God's power like gravity. Faith pulls like gravity. I did a message on that. And if you haven't, um, somebody said, I love it. So Pat, I know, I, I can't help myself. I am so passionate about God and about the things of God. And I feel like it's just getting more and more and more. <laughs> and really, ah. So again, faith releases God's power like gravity, okay? You overcome because you believe. Because you believe the truth. The truth, God's word is truth. When you believe God's word, nothing will be impossible to you. Nothing will be impossible to you. So you overcome because you believe the truth and the truth is what sets you free. The truth that you believe is what sets you free. That's John 8, 32, right? So Christ is the root and the source of your faith. And if your faith is in him, within you, right? You believe because Christ in you and you, be you believe his word, you know his word. Guess what? What you believe, you're going to speak and it's going to come to pass, right? Jesus said, whoever says to the mountain does not doubt, but believes what he says, it will happen. You know what it is? It's a spiritual law. It has to be. And if so, if you say that you're believing for something and you know, you speak it, listen, in your heart of hearts, you know whether you really and truly believe or not. You know. And if there's an mm, doubt, get rid of it. Lord, I repent for doubt. No, I choose to believe your word. Your word is true. Thank you, Lord, that your word is true. And you stay on that. You stay on that. I'm telling you, you're, you're going to see it. A, person's who, a person whose faith is definite and they won't consider anything else but what God said, dude, I'm telling you right now, you're going to have a definite experience and you're going to speak it out and you're going to act on it. I like to say, consider nothing else. Consider nothing else. The doctor gives you a bad report. La, 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 la. Thank you, Lord. By your stripes, I am healed. You know, those seven scriptures. I have them on my website. You can go to lisabuldo.com, the seven scriptures to stand for your healing, right on the homepage. Put in your name and your email address. It's the fastest way that I can get it, get it out to you automatically. Yes, you'll be on my email list, but I don't bombard you with emails anyway. You know, so in any event, I want to start sending more emails so I can, 
you know, start sending some videos and things like that and just kind of update you on stuff. So, and I will start doing that, I promise. So, um, I have to do it, I promise to give my word. Okay, so consider nothing else. You know, if it's God's promise, again, and you believe it, you're going to say it, you're going to act on it, you're going to see it. Okay, Mark 11, 23, and I said this before. Jesus said to them, have faith in God. Truly, I say to you that if anyone says to this mountain, be lifted up, thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things which he says will happen, it will happen. Mm, praise God. So, there's no limit to the power that God will cause to come on those who call on him in faith. So what does that, what does that mean? To call on him in faith. It means, listen, when it's, when you can't really turn to a human being or you just, I mean, I'm just being honest with you. I don't tell a lot of people, you know, like things that are going on in my heart. I mean, I have close friends and stuff, but I go to God and I'm like, Lord, you know, and and the Bible says that that he rewards those who diligently seek him because they believe that he is, right? He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him because they believe he exists and he is there and he hears and he answers and he does. And he placed his own Holy Spirit in you to help you, to give you wisdom, to give you revelation, to give you everything that you need to be victorious so that you can have faith to overcome the world. That's the victory. Your faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Anything the world's going to throw at you, right? Situations, circumstances, words, persecution, sickness, disease. Mm -mm. Nope. God says, don't consider anything else. Glory to God. <sighs> I say, Romans, I say no. God says, Romans 10, 12 says, for there's no difference between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and gives richly to all who call on him. What does that mean? He gives richly to all who call on him. It means he's going to give you in abundance all of himself to those who call on him. He will make himself. He's there for you. He will give to you. You need wisdom. Boom. You have it. Holy Spirit. God does not withhold good things from his children. And if you are born again, you are his child. There is nothing that he will withhold from you. He wants you to be victorious. He wants you to have the best. He wants you to be an overcomer. He wants you to have faith above all because he knows that if you have faith, faith in Jesus, faith that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, the very spirit of God's son, Galatians 4, 6 says that God put the very spirit of his son inside of all of his believers. We are his children. That makes us his children, his heir, right? Heirs with Jesus. Jesus is your big brother. He's your Lord and he's your savior. And he's given you authority over all the power of the enemy. <clears throat> and nothing shall by any means harm you. Oh my gosh, I'm not yelling at you. I'm just, I'm so passionate about this. Ah! Okay, and then, you know, stake your claim for your family, for your husband, for your wife, for your children, for your co-workers in faith. Lord, I call them into your kingdom. Lord, open the eyes of their understanding. Help them to see, Lord, that you are real. Let me tell you something. Those prayers are in alignment with God's desires because he loves you. He loves your children. He loves your spouse. He loves your co-workers. He loves all of us right? Those prayers are in alignment, but you, you, you come to him in faith, speaking those prayers, and then you make yourself available to help those in need. They have a problem. You're giving an ear. You're listening. You're being sympathetic. You're being, but what you do is you point them to God's word. Like when they say, oh, you know, I'm struggling with this. I don't know how to blah, blah, blah. And you just say, you know, you be there for them. You be kind to them. You know, and you just say, listen, I know the world would tell you this, you know, and you could say probably what they've already heard, but you say, but let me tell you what God says, and I agree with him. And let me tell you something. If you're consistently the light in your workplace or in the darkness, wherever you go, if you're consistently, if you're consistently the light, consistently, 
people are going to brand you in their minds as a man or woman of God, of wisdom, and they're going to see that your life is steady. That's why we don't go complaining and crying and speaking all the things that are not in alignment with God's word because you you have to be the overcomer. You've got to be the one, the light. Well, how are you going to have light? You got to have faith. And you got to walk in that. And that no matter what's going on, listen, I'm not saying there aren't times of, you know, tears or discouragement, you know, but you go to God, you get the wisdom, and you do what you need to do and you keep moving forward. You don't look back at the past and boo-hoo and fear and regret and torment and brokenness like the world around us is having and if you are going through that right now I told you what I did it's very powerful to just get on your knees and surrender you don't have to get on your knees I mean if your knees hurt you could be laying in bed but the point is is with your whole heart you could be sitting at a table like I am right now and just call out to the Lord anyone who calls on the Lord he will in no way cast out okay so all right um, Jesus said in Matthew 17 oh sorry I kind of skipped here what I was saying is stake your claim for them and, and then declare. Even if you see them acting up, you keep giving them positive you know, messages like, no, you're a mighty man of God. And they might be like, I don't want to hear that. I called my son a mighty man of God for the last, well, let's see, probably since he was like 16 and he's 29, almost 30 now. He'll be 30, I, oh my gosh, next weekend. And so, not, th not this weekend, but next weekend. But in any event, I'm still saying, hey, you mighty man of God, you, you have to declare it. You have to speak it. You have faith in it. You know you've asked God. doesn't matter how long it takes. You consider nothing else but the outcome of what you say you believe. Okay, I'm not yelling at you, but you get what I'm saying. You even, you might see worse behavior and you know what? Okay, it doesn't matter. He's a, you're a mighty man of God. Um, I'm just saying, you know, and every time you talk to me and they're like, oh yeah, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And you just keep saying, love you, here for you. You know, you just keep, keep, keep. Because remember, they're deceived. They don't even, they're not walking with the Lord. So they're not walking in the wisdom of God. You are. So you can't let anything that the world would say to you affect you Jesus didn't he didn't he under he operated with the wisdom that they didn't have understanding and he would say father don't hold it against them they don't know what they're doing and that's just it when someone isn't walking with the Lord for real they don't know what they're doing and even Christians they could say listen actions speak louder than words just saying you know all right so I was saying about stake your claim. And as your prayers rest on your faith, considering nothing else but the outcome, and you keep declaring and acting in agreement with your prayers that they're coming, right? And don't get mad at them. And don't, you know, just stay steady, stay consistent. Because I'm telling you, one day they will break and they will come to you. And then you'll be there with open arms, just like Jesus was for you. Just like he was for me, right? Praise the Lord. I mean... My son, I love it. He asks my, my advice all the time now. And his brand new wife too. I mean, they've been together for nine years and together and even independently, they would come to me sometimes. I'm like, oh. And my, my husband, Mike, would say, how great is that? They come to you. And I'd say, yeah, because they know. I'll, I'll say, the world would tell you this, but God says this. And they're like, hmm. You can't lose when you do it God's way. You can't. And if it looks like you are, trust me, you're not. You will come out better always. Well, you, you can't lose. If you do it God's way, you know what? The world will see God's hand on you. That's all I got to say. Okay, about that. <laughs> okay, and then as your prayers rest on the principle of faith, nothing will be impossible to you. Jesus said in Matthew 17, 20, for truly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, even just, listen, here's the thing. You can have small, like faith, just like a little mustard seed, but it's faith. Don't doubt, just faith. Consider not anything else, just that end result. Faith, speak it, act it. And when something else tries to come in, nope, 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 nope. 
And I'm telling you, that will offend some people. It will offend family. It will offend friends. And, oh well, I don't want to offend my God. I won't violate my conscience. And if I do something and I realize it was wrong, I repent right away because I didn't do it out of a heart to hurt somebody. That's another thing. And I know we only have a couple minutes left, but always look at someone's heart because they might do something or say something that hurts you, but they didn't mean it to hurt you. So, you know, always make sure that there's grace there. You know, I just had a conversation with someone today and I made a statement and he kind of said, well, but the grace. And I was like, oh, you're so right. You know, and, and I had to say, I'm sorry, because sometimes you don't mean, you know, or somebody towards you, they don't, and it wasn't something that wasn't, you know, in alignment with God's word. I mean, if, if listen, if I have, if I don't agree with someone and it's because their opinion is of the world and mine isn't, I'm not going to agree with that. And I'm going to say, you do what you want, but I'm doing it God's way. But I'm talking about something different where you're both, you know, you both love God. You're in alignment. You're in agreement. But, you know, you're just having a conversation and there could be like a misunderstanding, but you didn't mean like to hurt or offend. And be quick to say, I'm sorry, I really did not mean to hurt you or offend you, you know, kind of thing. And remember, a soft answer turns away wrath. When someone comes, raw, don't answer with raw, answer with, uh, you know, like, but firm, but you could be just gentle, humble, kind, or sometimes don't say anything at all, but don't have an attitude, you know? Okay. We only have a couple minutes left. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When you're really grounded in Christ, and you don't seek to go outside of him, you're going to you're going to win. And again, you're going to be consistent in your life and you're going to win many people to Christ because they're going to see the consistency in you. <laughs> Somebody just put a happy face with two heart eyes. That's cute. Okay. So, in John 14:6 through 7, Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me." He said, if you had known me, you would know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and I've seen him. Okay, so just as Jesus represented the father, you and I are now supposed to represent Jesus. And if we do this well, again, you're going to win many to Christ if you represent your king well. That means you do what he did. And that means you do the works that he did. Jesus said in John 14, 12, the works that I do that those who believe will do the same works and even greater because I go to be with the Father. Why? Because he, God put his, the spirit of Jesus in you and you can do the works that Jesus did. We just haven't really understood that yet. And I'm telling you, I'm going after this with everything I've got and I'm seeing more and more and more miracles and healing and great things happening. Praise God. Because I... I finally, you know, when the Lord said, stop saying, stop speaking the words, you know, I can't heal. Yes, we know it's Jesus that does the healing through us, right? Christ in you. But he, he told you to go do it. And, and I, you know, I was just having this conversation with my husband a couple minutes ago. And I know we only have like a minute left. But I was having this conversation with my husband about an hour ago. And I said, you know, it's like... We're so quick to say as Christians, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, because Jesus said, in my name, you will do these things. And yes, the name of Jesus is all powerful. But here's the thing. When he says, go and in my name, right? Well, the apostles didn't always say in the name of Jesus. They did with the man at the gate in the name of Jesus, you know, um, rise up uh, and walk, you know, and they helped him up. The guy that was lame, you know, uh, begging for alms, right? And they, he jumped up, was leaping and praising God. But Jesus, when we go, Jesus said, you go and do it in my name. That means you go in my authority. You go in my place and do it. But a lot of times, you know, in the practical sense, we say in the name of Jesus. And then it's like, okay, Jesus, like take over. No, no. And this is the revelation that has been coming that you go in his, you go in his name, in his 
place. I hope that makes sense. You go as his representative and you do it. Yes, you can lay hands. You can say in the name of Jesus or you could just speak. And it's got, that thing has to obey you because you're doing it in Jesus' stead, in his place, in his name. You're going in his, in his authority, in his name. So, and like when Jesus, you know, when, when the centurion servant was sick, he, Jesus said, I will come and heal him. He didn't say, my father's going to do it, although he said, it's the father in me that does the work. And he said, as the father sent me, I send you. You are going in his name. You are going in his place, in his stead. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Ambassadors of Christ. Bam. That, you know what? That's what I should have said. That is the truth. We are ambassadors of Christ. We go in his place. Thank you for that, Don. Well said. I love it. And that's what the word says. We are ambassadors of Christ. So we go, we represent him. And if you say, in the name of Jesus, but you've got to know you're going, you're in his, his stead. You speak, and but you got to know it's being done because Christ in you is being released through you. And you speak, and there's power being released. And then consider not anything else, and you will see the manifestation. You will see the manifestation Praise the Lord. Believer's authority. Exactly. Exactly. I love your comments, you guys. We are his body. That's right, Rita. We are his body. And Arlene said, believer's authority. That's right. We, we're believers. We have authority. And I am so out of time. So I didn't finish everything that I wanted to say, but I think um, it's fine because the Holy Spirit has spoken. I think you guys really understood this tonight. And so Jesus is our intercessor to our Father. That's right. Exactly. In Christ, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Exactly. So I want to thank you for watching the broadcast. Make sure that you share this on your social media. Let's advance God's kingdom together. You are a blessing. And remember, thank you, Anna. And remember, if you, um, Jesus is your Lord, you have authority. Go and represent your king well. Just do it and consider not anything else and you will see it. I love you. I bless you in Jesus' name and I'll see you next time on The Victorious Life, maybe sooner. All right, God bless you.